All right, so it's a gloomy February Saturday outside, but I'm down here in the basement inside about to start working on the plane. So I got all the rudder parts primed uh, last weekend. Love the way this stuff looks. I know I went on about that after priming the vertical stabilizer, but uh, again, I'm by no means uh, an expert or even a skilled amateur with the spray gun. And still, I think everything came out great and I just think it looks really cool. Uh, so still really happy with the priming. Uh, but now I can start riveting uh, rudder parts together. So the first thing I'll be doing today is riveting this bottom rib, the bottom rib halves together. I'll also be riveting the uh, nut plate to the control horn here and then riveting that to the rib. And then I'll also be riveting these uh, reinforcement plates and nut plates to the spark. And those, all these nut plates are to accept the rod end bearings that are used as the hinges that attach the rudder to the vertical stabilizer. So I'll get all that done. And then uh, the other thing I hope to get done today is riveting the stiffeners to the skin. And so I'll be back riveting those. It'll be the first back riveting I've done on the real plane. I did a little bit on the practice kit up there, but that's been several months and, uh, you know, it wasn't that many rivets really. So uh, anyway, I'm going to get started on all that. So uh, really absolutely nothing uh, new or magical here, just using the squeezer to squeeze uh, seven universal head rivets. Um, about the only thing to watch out for is to make sure you've got the pieces oriented correctly. And uh, I am using the foot pedal switch for the squeezer here. I've come to like that thing a lot. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, done. Okay, so what I'm doing here because I want uh, I want to hold this thing in. I want to hold the nut plate as flat as I can get it. And I noticed that when I put a uh, when I put a Clico in one side and a rivet in the other, it would tend to the Clico would hold it a little tighter. Well, of course, the Clico would hold it tight. It would cause it to sort of tilt up. So what I've done is I've threaded the the uh, rod end and the, the nut that will eventually go on it in there just a little bit and you know jammed it down. I didn't thread it all the way in because I think these are the nut plates kind of have a they're, they're not perfectly round. I think there's a locking kind of a lock nut uh, component to them and I don't want to use that up. <laughs> so um, yeah I, I've gone ahead and just tighten that down just enough to hold it I'm going to use, hopefully I can get everything in here and squeeze the rivet with that on there. So we're about to find out. So that's how that'll work. So now I'm attaching the rudder uh, control horn to the bottom rib. Should be pretty straightforward, uh, squeezing six rivets, uh, but you're about to see me mess up here. Oh. All right, so uh, here's a screw up. <laughs> Set the squeezer up for this guy and then squeeze this one at the same height and it went too far because it's thicker here. So I'll have to redo that one, um, but I'm gonna leave it in for now, do the rest, except for that one, but that'll hold that in. So stupid, I'll drill it out, probably should leave it. It's not too, too bad. I mean, measure the depth. It's, wow, it's just barely overdone. Um, let me try to measure that one. If it turns out it's in spec, let me leave it. 
So yeah, I did decide to go ahead and drill it out. I actually filmed the drilling out, uh, but it took a lot longer than I expected and the camera battery died. Uh, so I'll talk about that. All right, so I got that one drilled out. I figured I'd uh, stop and talk about it a little bit, especially since the camera died uh, right as I was getting it out. Uh, but so first of all, you know, what went wrong? This, this should have been pretty simple. Six rivets, using the squeezer, done that plenty of times. Uh, stupidly, what I did was I, I went ahead and got the squeezer set up for the rivets, you know, one of these two, these rivets, and then went over and did this one and forgot to take into account that I'm going through a little bit more material because it's, it's going through both of these uh, halves of the rib. And so it over squeezed it a little bit. Honestly, I probably should have left it. Um, it wasn't that, that over squeezed according to the little gauge here. And really when I measured it with the calipers as best I could, which is not, it's not easy to get a, a, a real good depth measurement with that thing, but uh, it was actually within spec. So again, probably should have left well enough alone, figured it's a big rivet. I can drill it out pretty easily. And I have, you know, this special tool, which I was a little bit disappointed in so the way this is supposed to work uh, is you choose the, you know, the right size for the proper universal head. Uh, so in this case, a 1 8 rivet, and that should keep it centered. And then the, this drill, you know, you, you put the drill bit up in there and it comes down and drills right down the center. And you can also set the depth so that it doesn't go any farther than enough to get the head off. Well, maybe this was a mistake I made, but I used the... 332nd rivet size bit, so it's probably a number 40 or something close. I used that bit uh, in there thinking I could just make a small pilot hole uh, and then, you know, go at it with the number 30. Well, <laughs> I started down in here and then took it off, luckily, before I got too far, and the hole wasn't centered uh, very well at all in the rivet. So I, I just took this thing off, went ahead and drilled it with a a number 40 and worked my way back centered before I then proceeded down with a number 30 to get the head off. It all came off clean. I did not widen the hole out any um, and I was able to use these cheapy diagonal cutters that I ground flat here on this face uh, to then sort of tear honestly, tear the, the head off once I knew that it was, you know, that the drilling had gotten it down close enough to where it was weak. Once I got that off, I still had a significant amount of rivet still stuck in the hole. Not sure how I can show this on camera, but I'll, I'll try. Uh, but you know, the rivet's pretty long because it's going through this thick horn and all this material. So just getting the head off, I wasn't gonna be able to just slip the rivet out uh, the shop head end uh, easily. I, I pulled on it a little bit again with these, these cutters. I filed those off as well. Um, but it, it wasn't just gonna come right out, so I went ahead and took the number 40 bit and drilled down again I don't know if you'll be able to see this but I drilled down the shank uh, and essentially made it hollow without you know touching the sides the inside of the hole uh, to weaken it and then was able to pull it out and you know only consequence is that I kind of scraped up my primer a little bit no big deal uh, I can actually touch that up later because this is on the outside this this will be on the outside of the plane, this bottom rib before I put the fairing on. So next time I'm priming something else, I can hit that with a quick shot of primer if I really want to clean that up. But the truth is, you won't be able to see more than a couple little lines. Uh, and again, once the fairing's on, you won't see anything. So I may touch it up much later, I may not. But lesson there is, pay attention to what you're doing, think about it first, and um, yeah, so Never underestimate, uh, you know, never think that a step's going to be really simple. <laughs> so, back to it. Alright, well, so these steps were really simple. So, uh, here I go ahead and attach both of the reinforcement plates uh, to the spar, and uh, then come back and attach the nut plates to the reinforcement plates and the spark. And I did the same thing uh, with these nut plates that I did with the one in the control horn. I used the tie rod end to, uh, you know, hold it in place and uh, then rivet it. All 
All right, so that's it for steps one through four on page 7-7 of the rudder. I've riveted the uh, rib halves together, the nut plate to the horn, the horn to the rib. Uh, so I've got this cool Star Destroyer looking thing and also got, uh, also riveted the nut plates and reinforcement plates to the spar. So now I can move on to um, back riveting stiffeners to the skin. So one thing I'm curious about, as you can see, I've been putting the rivets through such that the manufactured head is on this side of the spar and the shop head on this side of the spar. And I'm kind of interested in whether people think I'm doing that backwards. Um, the plans don't give any instruction one way or the other that I've seen. Uh, the only guidance I can really find about which way to put a rivet through is uh, in the mill spec document that I've referred to in the past where they say something to the effect of unless otherwise specified the manufactured head should go on the exterior surface. Well, uh, you know, there's not an obvious exterior surface to this particular part. If I really had to pick, this would be the exterior surface because this side is going to be completely, you know, the skins will be on this side, will be completely enclosed Whereas this side, the, the skins will, will wrap around and it'll be mostly enclosed, not to mention up against the back of the vertical stabilizer. So, uh, but there'll be a, a gap in the skin where the hinge is and where you could theoretically look up in there with a flashlight maybe and see these manufactured heads. And I'm not worried about it, but I am curious, uh, you know, do people think that this is backwards? Um, for the most part, I, I've been tending to pick the direction that is easiest to squeeze um, or easiest to, you know, set the rivet. So uh, that's kind of what I'm going to fall back to. But these, it, it really probably didn't matter. I just, this is the direction I did them. And once I got to the nut plate, I kind of thought, huh, you know, the other nut plate has the, because the head is countersunk, the other nut plate, they went through the other way. But these I'll just remain, I'll keep consistent over here. So. Just curious, what do people do? So I thought about it a little more uh, when I was editing this video, and obviously when I'm talking about the uh, rivet direction, I'm talking about the 470s. For a 426, of course, it's going in a countersunk hole or a dimple, so it's, it's uh, got an obvious direction. Uh, but to that end, you know, the 426s that are going to go in the, hold the skins to that spar flange, the shop heads are going to be visible through the hinge hole anyway, so I guess, if nothing else, I'm being consistent. Uh, but I'm still curious, you know, uh, what do people do? Leave me a comment. So back riveting the first couple of stiffeners goes really well. Uh, so well, in fact, that I just flipped it over and populate all the holes for all the other stiffeners and uh, just, just slide the skin along and do them all. And uh, you may notice I start you know, roughly in the center and work my way sort of back and forth uh, out toward the edges. Don't know if that's important, uh, but it seemed like a good idea and it didn't seem to hurt anything. So. Sure, you clamped it. Yeah, well, I clamped it, sprayed it, and moved the clamp. So everything else got a second coat. But that's okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right, that's good. We do the other side. And even though it usually looks like I'm down here uh, by myself, uh, quite often I've got some company just off camera, so uh, that's good. Also means when you hear me, uh, when it sounds like I'm talking to myself, I'm probably not.
Okay, so I have back riveted all the stiffeners to the rudder skins. It went really smoothly and fairly quickly considering the number of rivets involved. I think uh, back riveting is just like that. Um, you know, you get really nice results fairly easily and quickly. So about the only comment or thing I thought I'd, I'd mention is, you know, people may have noticed that all this time I've had this back rivet plate that I painstakingly sunk down in my table here and then I didn't use it. Uh, so, you know, what gives? And part of it is because I wanted to keep the skins on uh, on the carpeting. I decided I wanted to do that since I um, had peeled off the blue stuff. The other thing is, it kind of occurred to me that, you know, when I put this plate in the table, I oriented it this way, and that would mean that the way I'd want to have the skins would be running like this. And I could have made that work with stools and towels and stuff, and, and that would have worked out. But, you know, really, I probably should have oriented the, this plate you know, this way. Um, and so, yeah, in the end, between, between wanting to use the carpet and thinking it was better to have the plate oriented this way, I just used a different plate. And I actually had a second back rivet plate I accidentally bought two when I was buying all my tools. And they're not cheap, so I thought about sending it back. But they're also pretty heavy. And I think it would have cost me a significant out to return the thing so I in the end I ended up keeping it thinking well, I'll find a use for it or whatever and I did so uh, anyway worked out fine I, I will probably cut a hole in a piece of carpet and, and use that because I did have to sort of fiddle around you know move stuff around and shift it around um, and that wasn't ideal but I didn't want to tear up my carpet until I um, until I had tried it out but it worked really well I've got a, another a spare piece of carpet that I can cut a hole in, and I'll probably go ahead and do that, and that'll become my back riveting platform. So, uh, yeah. So that's it for page 7-7. -7. I'm going to go ahead and get started on page 7-8, because that's uh, some work on the top rev, and I think that should go pretty quickly. I can get that done this evening, and that should bring me up to the point where it'll be time to start messing around with the trailing edge and the tank sealant. And uh, so if I can get to that point, then it'll be a good stopping place. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I actually did get all the way through 7-8 that night, uh, but this video's already gotten pretty long, so I'm gonna save all that for the next one.